Don't go after Packmaster in hopes that his future companion will be both awesome and easily obtainable by you. A prediction for your consideration about Packmaster Shayek. So he's gonna talk about this. He just posted this eight hours ago. Um, so yeah, the new fusion hints at a release of a new beast coming in the future. Gonna work in conjunction with Packmaster. The new beast will attack with his A1 if Packmaster is hit according to the passive, and he's probably gonna be hit because of his taunt mechanic. It's a two turn. Think about Polarium acting as a company and how this is all gonna unfold. I believe the new beast will br they're gonna bring in is gonna be ridiculously overpowered when used in conjunction with Packmaster. His A1 is likely gonna be an AoE with some drop defense mechanic. Again, this is all prediction. This is 55 Hotel Bravo just saying that um, he thinks this is what it's going to be like, and it might very well be like that. He might be calling it. What the kicker is going to be, in true Polarium fashion, is that the new beast will probably be incredibly difficult to obtain. Maybe it's going to be a champion training event that you're going to have to vie for, just like Nerigante Archer. Or you might have to pull 120 Void Shards for it. You, you don't know yet. We don't know yet. Why? So, or it might be one of those Prism Shard things, right? Why? So that everybody who went for the fusion really feels the need to get him, to go for the beast, the new beast that's eluded, that will be coming. Otherwise, they're stuck with an average champion in Packmaster. I don't think, I don't think Packmaster is necessarily average. I wouldn't say he's like a C tier champion. I'm going to give him a B. I think he's a B tier, B, B plus tier champion. Who should go for him? In my opinion, I think anyone... If you have the resources to do so comfortably, and you've got the time in real life to do so, I would say anybody from beginning to late game could go for this champion and probably benefit. If you're an end gamer like me who can literally do everything in the game and aren't scared or worried about whatever Polarium is going to throw at us in the future, or if you don't care about certain content, then you could probably skip this champion. I'm comfortably going to be skipping this champion, and I'm not going to regret it. What will be the kicker, in true Polarium fashion, is the new beast will be incredibly difficult to obtain. Why? So that everybody who went for him is going to feel like they really need to go for him. They, uh, for the new champion. Or they're going to be stuck with an average champion. They've drained people through the fusion, so those people will be more susceptible to the sunk cost fallacy. I've done the fusion, and he's pretty useless on his own. I really need this new beast now to make it worth it. It's true, the sunk cost fallacy is a thing. The more you spend, the more you invest, the more likely you're going to continue to spend further and delve further into your wallets, basically, right? I went for the Nergigante Archer event, and I spent a lot of money on that event to try to win first place to win the Archer. I ended up losing, I ended up getting Krakened out, but to the very last second, I was buying packs left and right trying to just win because I was like, all right, well, I already spent this much. I might as well spend this much more. It was stupid and foolish on my end because I don't got it like that. But if you're one of those guys that can drop $1,500 um, a month on raid, you know, good for you. Spend your money however you want to, but that's not me. Think about Polarium's tactics in the past. Isn't this the perfect storm for half the community to be annoyed that they never went for Packmaster and the other half forced to use or more likely buy 20 sacreds or 120 voids to get the new beast. It's got real Ancora Narcis vibe to it. I didn't go for Ancora. I didn't go for Narcis. Do I regret it? No. I didn't go for Wixwell. Do I regret it? No. I didn't go for Eostrid. Do I regret it? No. There are all these comps that came out, but I'm still like not whining about it. I'm not the type to bitch, moan, and complain. The whales won't care either way, and Polarium will make a killing on people who fe whose fear of missing out will be too strong to avoid reaching for their wallets. This is true. This is a tactic. This is, this works. This Polarium tactic works. Keep in mind that this works, and it's working on you. It's worked on me. Unless you're like a hardcore free-to-play champ, um, not champion, free-to-play player, like... I'm talking, when I say free to play, like you've never spent a single dime, not a single dime, not a single 99 cent singular ancient shard pack. There are some people who say they're free to play, but they buy the monthly pack. That's not free to play. There's some people who say they're free to play, but they have a bot account. That's not free to play. 
I know some of you are diehard free to play and will never pay, so this might not relate to you, relate to you, but I'd be interested in hearing everyone's thought on uh, thoughts on this. Yeah. So this is an interesting prediction. I think that there might be some merit to it, but again, it's all prediction, it's all speculation, it's all might. It might happen. This guy, uh, Turtle Shellen, was uh, kind of trolling in the comments here, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, point out some stuff here because he did make some good points. Again, this is a champion fusion that you might wanna go for if you uh, are early, beginning to late game. This is a champion you don't skip. They clearly said more hounds are coming. I already said that in the video. New hounds can come indefinitely and each one can be a potential deadly combo. To skip this fusion would be an insane mistake you are going to regret in the future. You will regret in the future. I don't agree with this last part. I don't think you should tell anybody what they will and will not regret. Um, yeah, so I, I said my piece here. Then he said every fusion skipped this year would be a mistake except the last one. Every fusion skipped this year would be a mistake except for the last one. A uh, mistake for some people, but not for everybody, and definitely not for me. Like I said, I skipped Yastrid, I skipped Wixwill, and I'm doing Hydra just fine. I'm reaching the turn limit on full auto, on normal and hard, and that's on two different accounts. So me missing out on Wixwill or Yastrid doesn't really, like I'm not going to cry about it and I don't regret it. Missing out on Narcis and um, and Korra, I'm I'm still placing Plat. You know what I mean? I still smash. And Live Arena and Plat aren't really even like I don't really care about PvP either way. So no, I don't regret it. And this champion, I don't think I'm gonna regret skipping out on um, Packmaster either. And there's nothing anybody there's nothing anybody should be able to say. And this is not just for me, but for anybody. Uh, who's who's watching this or, or listening um, this far in. If um, anybody is telling you how to feel or that you're going to regret or, you know, whatever, I don't think you should listen to that and really take that in. Um, now, I'm not saying don't be the type of guy who can't take criticism and, and can't change your mind, but there are certain instances like this one where I don't think you should let people uh, change your mind just because somebody says something you know what i mean what other game uh but yeah no he he does have good points like this one right here uh skipping this few and he's very he's very adamant about letting me know that he means anybody and nobody he's really trying to rope me in to this everybody thing here it's not gonna work and i'm still not part of the anybody anybody thing i'm in my own um you know whatever you want to call it here. This is why I don't put a blanket statement out. I'm only speaking for myself. I will not regret it. Anybody skipping this fusion is going to miss out on future combos. Future combos for what? What content can't I do? There is new content that's going to come out in the future, but I'm not afraid of it. I'm not scared of it. Like I'm, I'm going to do it regardless. And I'm going to get to the point where I can do it on full auto, just like everything else in raid. Future strong teams on a Trunda level, I have Trundas. <laughs> I have the standard. So what do I need Packmaster for if I'm already at the Trunda level? It's just a bad skip for anybody. Sure, do you know everybody? What other champions in the game has, has a three turn taunt? Nobody. That's useful for everybody. True, that can be useful for everybody. If they care about it. Not, not getting eaten by Hydra heads. You're not going to get eaten by Hydra heads if you're smashing through those heads, which is what most end gamers do. On normal and high and, and hard Hydra, in fact, if you um, if you're strong enough or even that crack and doubt, brutal and, and nightmare, you're not worried about getting eaten by Hydra heads because they're dead before they even get a chance to eat you. I could go on forever about this champ. Nobody wants that. From hard fire night, which I already do full auto in on a, in about two minutes, two to three minutes, hard night ten to whatever but you don't definitely skip this one, nobody. Sure, dude. So I said, speak your truth, it might be the truth, but it won't be my truth. He says, I'm gonna sub just so I can say you told you so. I told you so. I'm gonna sub just so I can say you told you so. Whatever makes yourself feel good, dude. <laughs> Whatever makes yourself feel good. But um, yeah, so don't let anybody get to you like that, I guess. But a lot of you other guys had some actually productive 
and, and useful comments here. So uh, thank you guys for everybody who, uh, what do you call it, um, shared your guys' thoughts. A uh, user had a really good one. My motto is to never skip any fusions. This is true. Like I said, if you have the resources for it and you have the time for it and you can comfortably do it, I would say don't skip a fusion because a Lego was a Lego, right? Or who said it? Gavin? Shout out to Gavin. A Lego is a Lego, right? It's a free quote unquote Lego. Unless you're tied up with work and other fusions because I, I'd rather complain about wasted resources and getting a useless champion rather than crying not going for that fusion and in the end it turns out to be good or even top tier later on. Yeah, that's true for most people. Yeah, I would say that this is true. It's better to have the option than to not have the option. Unless you're me or in my position. Let's see what everybody says here on the Reddit post. Congrats, you managed to make Polarium will release a new duo as a fusion, then a guarantee for the fifth time sound nefarious, as if this is not something that they normally do. And coming after a fusion, a lot of people skip, no less. I mean, we're due for a deck of fates, so that would be my guess. Have they ever had a champ reward from a deck of fate? Yeah, they did. They had um, Kaja. We're due for a new login, right? They have, that's how I got, oh yeah, that's how I got Kaja during Timid. Both really cool champions, by the way. Um, not like top tier, but I still like them. They also gave away the Void Blade Master that way. Oh, that's true. Uh, the Void Blade Master uh, from Monster Hunter. I think we're due for a new login champion. Sitting on 27 Sacreds, bring it on. I've got 24, yeah. Gwendolyn in New Year, 23 to 24, yeah. Packmaster doesn't need a pack at all. He's gonna be very strong in Hydra because he covers so many important bases. He can be built for a team that will allow him to single-handedly stop champs from being eaten. He can mischief tank, he applies block buffs, which by the way, it's not a hit. So because it's not a hit and he just places it, uh, I forgot who said it, but um, who said it? Uh, da, da, da. I think it was G Wong. Uh, what he says makes it more auto friendly but yes if you have the team he doesn't add value to your account so sure you can skip see he gets it but he is unique which makes him more desirable as you never know if if he's going to be useful in future content yeah true i mean but that could be said about anything if you have a full auto hydro team then yeah uh where somebody said something that actually made a lot of sense and now i forgot oh here rafael masuka his a3 is strong not because it's irresistible, it's because it's not a hit. So you can't weak hit, which makes it very reliable. Plus it's A2, makes him a good mischief tank. 20% damage can't be underestimated. We see a lot of uh, all these champions. Anyway, don't make the weak hound interactions fool you. He is useful even without it. I think there's merit to what he's saying here. Uh, everything he just said, since Padrig, Cardiel, and Makage are quite strong in Hydra, that would mean more damage to the Hex head. Granted, he will be even better with at least one powerful hound down the line, but since he's so strong already, the FOMO factor of potentially missing out on a combo with a hound shouldn't be a decider. 20 sacreds, 20, 120 voids, just to be safe. Just to be safe, I'm gonna skip the fusion and won't care. Same, bro. Personally, I hate the champion's kits that are tied to other champion's kits. It's hard to get one legendary or mythic champion, much more specific, uh, two specific ones. That's true, that's a good point here right so um anybody who's saying like oh you're gonna regret it you also have to kind of think if we're if we're even talking about making a blanket statement like that is everybody who is going to go for the fusion also 100 percent going to go for the dog that's going to come out in the future i don't know it also like i said we don't know it depends on how the um the champion is going to be released right because if it's a 10x on on uh on like ancients or voids or, or whatever you could spend a thousand dollars or you could you know what i mean like you could spend four hundred dollars and not get a nut or a thousand or sorry not a nut a four hundred or a thousand dollars and not get the champion that you are, are shooting for even during a 10x right he seems okay with the hex and block buffs for hydra I don't know if he would ever make it out of my vault but i'm sure bronco will do something cool with him that's true bronco will probably do something cool Dude, did you miss the 20% more damage under those hex? Crank his ac accuracy as high as Snoop on 420. <laughs> and your entire team does 20% more damage now. That's fucking insane. Let alone if you pair him with another hex champ. That bonus is only for his hex. 
being applied, not from other champions. That's true. I mean, yeah, this is he's not wrong. An extra 20% more damage is going to be nice. That's all that's nothing to sneeze at. I'm not I'm not going to say that this is nothing. But you know what I mean? I agree people will get uh, will get upset over something that was wildly expected in par for the course. There are some great duos that most free to play low spenders will never get unless playing for years. What's the difference? One more duo, exactly. What's the difference? One more duo, Packmaster plus Imaginary Super Wolf makes comparing to already existing Siffy Ro Rodos and Cora Narcis, Venus Cupidus, Cardiel Lix, Marishka, and Taris. As it was said, don't go after Packmaster in hope that his future companion will both be awesome and easily obtainable. This right here, thumbnail right here. Thank you, Chapter Affectionate. Period statement. Do not go after Packmaster in the hope that his future companion will be both awesome and easily obtainable by you. Packmaster has a unique kit and he's also solid for Hydra, but not Trunda like Broken. The expected optimal Polarium tactics may differ, but the most obvious choices make a new companion broken for competitive content, Arena and Hydra Clash, and hide him behind a high pay to win paywall like Nergigante Archer was, and Siffy and Marishka. And Taurus are always hidden like that. For example, a 10x or a tournament prize make the companion solid and hide him behind lesser but still challenging paywall like Narcis, Fatalis. For example, it's a complexity of guaranteed 20 plus sacreds or 150 plus voids. Other tactics don't sound to be good for Polarium's wallets. It's Cardio, Sishio, Astral, and Lix, by the way. True. I'm gonna do all the I'm gonna do all the fusions until I max the fax, uh, faction guardians. With their obsession with prism events. We'll be lucky as hell to have a guaranteed for this. That's true. 